Good morning, afternoon or evening. Today we are talking about how you can start nailing your manual exposure every single time in manual settings. Let's talk about that. Alright, it's a juicy one today. We're covering the basics right from the very beginning all the way into the complex stuff. But today is just the basics. So, let's start where we should. Exposure is the sensitivity of your camera sensor to light. This sensitivity and the exposure of your camera is measured in stops of light or stops. Your camera has a light meter in it. It's this little bar here. You'll find it in your viewfinder right at the very bottom. Now your light meter is what you're gonna be using to expose your photo. When your photo is properly exposed, it'll be somewhere around here in the middle. That's where it's properly exposed. When a photo is referred to as blown out or overexposed, it'll look a little something like this. Ooh, yuck. Which isn't great. And that just means that your photo is somewhere on this end of the scale. Now, if it's underexposed, it'll look a little something like this. And then it's too dark. You can't see anything. So let's bring it back. And that just means that it's too far on this end of the scale. To understand how to make sure that this whole thing works, you need to understand the exposure triangle. This is what's used to balance the light meter, and it's the easiest way that I can explain it. The exposure triangle hangs very loosely in the balance in your camera. Every time that you change one of your settings in manual, this triangle is gonna get all out of whack, and you want it to be nice and straight. Three factors influence the exposure triangle. You've got your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. Your shutter speed is how quickly the mirror inside your camera flicks up and down. To make it simple, it's the difference between completely freezing the action in your image compared to having it flow and end up as a more blurry image which conveys more motion. The larger the fraction in your camera, the shorter the period of time that your sensor is exposed to light. So it's the difference between this and this. So you can see the little mirror in there is flicking up and down. So when I make my shutter speed 1 4,000th of a second and I click in my shutter, you can see that it's really, really fast. It's just like a split second, it's gone. The shorter you make that shutter speed, the less time your sensor is exposed to light and the less light is in your image. When capturing a moving subject, anything over 1 300th of a second will very likely capture the motion in your image. But it depends entirely on how fast your subject is moving. Now moving on to aperture, your aperture is the number in your camera with the little F in front of it. It's commonly referred to as the F-stop. This number represents the size of the hole within your camera lens that is letting in light. The lower this number is, the more wide open your lens is and the shallower the depth of field in your image becomes. Your depth of field is how much of your image is in focus. So the lower your f-stop is, the shallower your depth of field is, and the blurrier your background becomes. So as you can see with aperture, if I bring my aperture up, I'm now at f16. And as you can see, a lot more of the background is in focus. You can really start making out the real detail in my background. But when I bring it back down, you can see that I start to get a much shallower depth of field back here and the lower that aperture starts getting, the blurrier that background gets. So here's the same photo twice. The first one has an f-stop of 1.8, which is much more wide open and has a shallower depth of field. And the second one has an f-stop of 16, which has a lot more in focus and the background is a lot less blurred. Lastly, your ISO is the last thing you should be touching in your exposure. It's your camera's digital manipulation of light. So the higher that number gets, the brighter your image becomes. It sounds like a godsend, but the higher that number gets, the more grain you start to introduce into your image. So, it's the difference between this image and this image, which is now at ISO 6400. And as you can see, there's a lot more grain, especially in the shadows up there and in the blacks here. You'll really, really be seeing that. Now, especially in photography, your ISO really, really matters. The thing with ISO is you can't fix it in post. That's the thing with your exposure triangle. You have to get all of this right in camera. You can make basic adjustments later on when you start editing your photos, but you have to get it right in camera. Now that you know the basics, get out there, take some photos, start practicing, start learning how to balance your exposure triangle and start nailing your exposure every single time. The exposure triangle is difficult and it will take you a little while to get used to. But once you do, you'll have every ounce of creative control in your image and you can start bending your camera's capabilities to your will. I hope you've learned something from this video. I don't run ads on this channel. I want this channel to be free. I want you to be able to learn without needing to pay for it. And I know that ads are really frustrating. 
but that means that I'm not making an income from this channel. So if you like this content and you want to support me in creating further content, you can find me on Patreon and you can find the link right up there or you can go into the description and click the link there. Otherwise, if you want a physical product, I'm selling prints of my work, which you can find in the description below, and you can order them, and they're fantastic prints. I would really recommend them to you. If you do become a patron, I post behind the scenes content, you get access to my preset pack and some of my raw images for you to start editing. You'll also get a shout out at the end of the last video of every month, where I'll be reading out all of your names at the very end. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, start a discussion. I want to hear your thoughts, I want to hear your experience with manual photography and your journey as a photographer up to where you're at now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.